In this video, we're going to look a little more broadly at what we mean by average rate of change and then move on to what we mean by instantaneous rate of change in a more uh, abstract sense. In the previous video or videos, we looked at velocity as a particular instance of a rate of change, but there are many types of rates of change. So we want this video to serve as kind of a an overall uh, an overall summary of what we mean when we say average rate of change. So here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to call this picture you have in front of you, it's called this graph f of x. So this is the graph of, you know, y equals f of x, or just f of x is fine. And uh, I'm going to label this x value a and this x value b. And if that's a, then this y value we would call f of a, just using function notation. And we'd call this y value here, one that lines right up with the output of b, f of b. Okay, and so what we talked about in the last video is, you know, the, this curve may represent many different things. It could be your position, it could be your velocity, it could be some other type of of quantity that varies over uh, over over time or, or just varies with relation to another quantity. Um, when I say average rate of change, what I'm looking at is the slope of this line here, which is called the secant line. So again, that's a secant line. And so to determine the slope of this line, we can just take note of the fact that slope is your change in y divided by your change in x. And so to better see that, I like to draw a little triangle here, a right triangle. And I would label this, uh, I would label this side. This is my change in x, right? This is how my x is changing as I go from a to b. So the triangle is the symbol we often use to represent change. And there, therefore, this is a change in y. Now, we actually can do better than just, just those, uh, those symbols, because we actually know what the change in x is. We have a formula for it, right? This distance right here between a and b would just be b minus a. Okay, and if you don't believe me, just pick a few numbers to, to convince yourself. If this is 9 and that's 6, then that distance is 3, which is just 9 minus 6. So hopefully you're convinced. And then therefore our change in y we can view as the difference between my y values, f of b minus f of a. And so the slope of this line we're going to represent in a few different ways. And this slope of this line, this secant line, is what we mean by the average rate of change. And in a previous video, we used the context of, you know, traveling from Boston to New York. And, you know, it took you, you know, I, f I forget, but like, you know, three hours to go 300 miles. Then your average rate of change is 300 divided, divided by uh, 3, which is 100. Okay, that, that is just, when you do that calculation, you are calculating a slope, and what you are calculating is the slope of a secant line. So in general, we're going to say that the average rate of change of y with respect to x on the interval. Okay, so you can only talk about average rate of change on an interval. A to B is uh, geometrically it's the slope of the secant line Okay, the slope of the secant line that sort of links A and B. I'm going to make this a little smaller. It's the slope of the secant line. Um, 
and you can also view that as change in y over change in x in this diagram which we actually have a formula for f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a so in terms of like a formula we we apply there it is okay so this is average rate of change next we're going to look at instantaneous rate of change and see that it's uh, the notion of instantaneous rate of change really derives from this idea of average rate of change so it's it's important that you understand this diagram and this little formula here and why it's why it makes sense so here we we're going to look at instantaneous rate of change okay so i wrote the derivative at a point in parentheses you can put instantaneous rate of change because we just looked at average rate of change okay now what I want to do here is I would like to almost almost kinda of re redraw the same picture that I drew in the last video or, or the last um, diagram where I was looking at average rate of change so I'm going to call this point A, I'm going to call this, uh, this function f of x, y equals f of x. And if that's A, then this y coordinate, we'll call f of A, the output. And now here's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to, I'm not going to label my other x value B. I'm going to label it x, I'm going to label it a variable. And the reason I'm doing that is because in deriving a little formula for the derivative at a point, what I want is the slope of the tangent line. Now, as a reminder, the tangent line looks like this. Okay, it's the slope of that line that just touches, grazes the point, grazes the, the curve at that one point. I'm interested in that slope. Okay, so so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let my second x value be a variable. So let's label the diagram then. This would be the output here I would just call f of x. Okay, so now we've got, we sort of have the sim a similar diagram here. I'm going to draw a triangle. And here's a secant line. All right, that's a secant line that links links the points a comma f of a to x comma f of x. This distance is still my change in x. This is my change in y, and our formula is just well my my change in x is just x minus a. Just like just like before, where it was b minus a. My change in y is f of x minus f of a. And so at this point, if I just if I want the slope of this secant line, right, the slope of the secant line, is just change in y over change in x, which is just f of x minus a. I'm sorry, f of x minus f of a divided by x minus a. Now here is where the punchline comes in. I am interested in the instantaneous, so let's write this down, the instantaneous rate of change of my y variable with respect to x. Okay, that's one way of phrasing what I'm looking for, the instantaneous rate of change of y with respect to x at the point x equals a. That is another way of saying I want the slope of the tangent line, the slope of that blue line, okay, the slope of this tangent line, the slope of this blue line, let's label this tangent line, I want that slope. 
Okay, now, how do I do that? Well, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to start moving this x variable. I'm going to start moving that closer and closer to a. And by doing that, what happens is, if you can imagine, every all these other variables would slide with it. So my secant line would start to look like this, and then look like this, and then look like this, etc. And the closer you get, the closer x gets to a, the closer the slope of all these, the slope of all these secant lines, the closer those slopes get to the slope of that tangent line. And what we call it when we, you know, as we take that limit, we call the instantaneous rate of change, or the slope of the tangent line, we call that the derivative, the derivative of f of x at x equals a. Okay, and that's like the big, it's kind of, that's the math jargon for what we're looking for. Now let's get a, let's get a little definition for it. That is equal to, so graphically we know that's equal to the slope of the tangent line. at x equals a, and that's equal to, now here's the notation we use. We say f, and we put this little dash here, that means f prime, f prime of a. That just means the slope of the tangent line at x equals a. It's just math concise notation for that. And that's going to equal, well what are we doing? We're taking the slope of those secant lines, f of x minus f of a, over x minus a, we are taking this, that, that's just the slope of the secant line that we started with. But what are we, what are we doing? We're, we're letting x come towards a, and as that happens, those black lines start to emerge, right? If you can imagine, imagine it, uh, it moving, the slopes of those secant lines start to approach the slope of the tangent line. So in the limit, the limit as x goes to a of this ratio is going to precisely give us the slope of the tangent line. And remember, the important thing about limits is it's what you're approaching, not what actually happens when you get there. We can never actually get there, because notice, if I plug a into this, into, into this expression, you're dividing by zero. But that's where, uh, that's why the notion of a limit is so important, because it's what you're approaching, not what's actually there. So this is a very key definition that you'll want to circle. Um, just so you know, some you might see this show up. This little expression here, just this part of the of that definition is often called the difference quotient. Difference quotient makes sense, right? There's a difference when you're subtracting, and then you're dividing two quantities. So it's called the difference quotient. So there is. Sort of the the mo one of the most fundamental videos you'll probably see on uh, on calculus introducing the derivative, the instantaneous rate of change, uh, and the definition we have for it.